We'll uh, officially open our work session, and I know we have three aldermen in the room. We have one on the phone. Alderman Carver's on the phone. Alderman Sistrunk is on her way. Uh, Vice Mayor Perkins and uh, Alderman um, Walker are not going to be in attendance. And so um, that is, that'll be our complement of folks today. So I'll call the meeting to order. We have several things that I think are significant on the agenda to, do, to uh, go over and to, for everybody to contemplate. Um, and first up is uh, Mr. Kemp, who's going to uh, talk about the street priority projects and the discussions of the street overlay policy, which uh, I will set him up just briefly on the policy piece of it. One of the things that um, we have talked about in the past is um, priorities for streets, who gets what, you know, who, what gets overlay, what, you know, what status uh, any particular street is in. And um, the goal, thank you, is to um, see if we have a policy that makes sense for all of us moving forward, um, something that uh, allows us to um, plan ahead. And so I have asked um, Mr. Kemp to put together something based on conversations I've had with everybody off and on over the years. And in particular, it is, uh, there's like a, the policy itself is a narrative. I did, the narrative belongs to me, so I'm the one who kind of set that tone. But the details and the hard work came from Mr. Kemp in working through um, the streets, the, the, the miles, and what it means, the status of the roads, etc. None of this is obviously set in stone. This is something that I want everybody to consider. But what came to mind and the reason I'm setting it up is because, um, or having this narrative to set it up, is because one of the things that concerned me and was brought to my attention, actually Mr. Latimer most recently emphasized it, was if y'all recall when the SEC did a, a promo for the city as a part of their programming, they shot a picture down Main Street and Main Street looked pretty rugged. And so that is our, that is our front door, that is our signature University Main Street, uh, the streets that are the streets that our, our visitors as well as our residents travel the most are the ones that I think need to be on a, a more a shortened time schedule to keep them looking good. It's, it's the who we are of our community and infrastructure underneath the ground we've focused on and we've gotten taken care of and we have a plan for, but infrastructure above the ground that is the street state for us, we have not done a policy on. So I thought at the very least that we take a look at what would make sense if those streets need to be done more often, if there are other streets that need to be done differently, if there are local streets or cul-de-sacs that are not traveled frequently, that are only impactful for um, our residents in a small kind of way, that we look at how, you know, if they're not having that much traffic and they aren't torn up that much or that, that often, unless there's something going on like construction or, you know, something that, that changes that, that um, ability of that street to maintain who it is and, 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 its, and its structure. So what I wanted to do was pose a policy that would take those things into account. And so Mr. Kemp has done that and he, bless his heart, he put his nose to the grindstone and did it in a fairly short period of time and I think has, has done something that makes sense. But obviously it's up to the board to, to feel comfortable with that as a programming. And so I will turn it over to Mr. Kemp and let him give you the kind of the why of his his numbers and and what he looked at in getting this done. So okay, that's all that to well, leave up to you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. And I, I've uh, this has been a great project for us to work on. We've been working on this pretty much uh, almost exclusively for the last week and a half, two weeks. I want to I want to recognize the folks in my office who've been working on this tirelessly with me. Y'all, of course, know Cody Burnett, who's been with us for a while. Uh, he, along with Brad Skelton, who y'all may or may not have met Brad because he started right at the beginning of the pandemic and he's been with us since March. And this mask is really hard to talk about, but um, I'm going to take it off with another day. Just now. stay away. Um, but Brad has done a great job with us as well. Both of them put together has helped me uh, really do this. So it's been a team effort, so just want to recognize them. Today, we're, what we, the mayor did uh, did a great introduction about what we want to talk about with the street policy. But I'd also like today to talk a little bit uh, more uh, talking about just transportation in general. Um, and I want to kind of go over, these are the things I want to talk about. With any work session, is a very casual conversation. So if something doesn't make sense, just stop me, and uh, I'll try to be as brief as I can and succinct. But 
but obviously would be more than willing to talk about any of these topics more if you'd like to. This is kind of like, there's a method to the madness and I'll show you how we're gonna go through this because all this kind of culminates with the, with the street policy and some of these things were dictated upon that. Kind of near the middle part of the presentation, I wanted to talk, get you, give you a brief update on the 2020 overlay project that we just about finished and then also looking ahead to the 2021. I want to talk about some of the sidewalk projects that we're proposing uh, to do over the next six to nine months as well. And then at the conclusion, I'm going to kick it off to uh, Kevin Stafford and Robert Walker with Neil Schaefer, and they're going to give an update on the regional transportation study that we're in the middle of. Um, that's in uh, that's a joint project with MDOT, MSU, Octavio County, and the city of Starville. So think about today is really just a transportation related uh, work session. And um, I think we're going to hit just about every aspect of that, uh, maybe except for transit. So this is something that we started on actually during the pandemic is updating our official street map. I have a copy of it over on the wall uh, for those that don't have a packet and the board members, I have a, a copy in your packet as well. Um, here that you can look at. This is in draft format. We feel like it's really close. Um, our last update is uh, was done around 2013. As y'all know, we've added quite a number of streets um, since then with new development. Um, the other thing that we found is um, there was a lot of things that were a little bit off when it came to street names, uh, terminology that didn't quite sync up with E911 in Octavio County and the Postal Service. So uh, it's been a pretty painstaking effort. It's something that Cody has been working on uh, really for months is trying to get this in a, in a format to where we are completely up to date. Um, we are still, we're calling it draft um, state right now because we are receiving and we love any kind of comments or feedback that you might have either uh, about the content itself, like this street should be pine road instead of pine lane or whatever it might be in my you know and, and we can research that more or if, if there's something just graphically uh, that we can communicate easier better we're, we're open to those suggestions as well so our hope is over the next month or so if you see things that you may have questions about or you think might be beneficial to, to change let us know and we'll incorporate those and we'll bring that back to the board hopefully before the end of the year and let y'all officially adopt it and then going forward, we'll uh, we'll set up a process to where we're updating it much more regularly. Probably once or twice a year, we'll bring that back to the board, just so we uh, we will have that latest and greatest. And we'll obviously put this on the website as well for public feedback. Our long-term goal and goal is obviously to put it up in GIS once it's uh, updated and have an interactive street map uh, on uh, on our website. So. In order to get on our street policy, we really needed to know, have a current snapshot of what our street system looked like. So this is kind of where we started. And then from this, what we did is we went through and classified all of our existing streets into one of these four categories, okay? So our principal arterials, these are, um, for the most part, we're not, we're not maintaining any of these. These are all MDOT roadways. These are gonna be Highway 25, 82, 182 highway 12 these are our main arteries that are um, going through the town that carry the most amount of traffic um, you know higher speed a lot of them are four lane some of them are divided some controlled access the next group is minor arterials so this would be one step below that you're still going to get some higher speed a lot of volume um, it, it, it is going to be the main i guess the secondary arteries that are connecting the main arteries to these other kind of uh, um, roadway networks. Um, these examples of these would be like uh, Jackson Street, Stark Road, Montgomery, North and South Montgomery. Um, Bluefield. Bluefield. Uh, probably not in this category, but just because of the traffic volume. These are going to have thousands of cars per day. Okay. Higher speed. Uh, not going to have a whole lot of presence of residential directly onto that or providing access to it, but as far as individual houses. That's going to fall really under the next group, which is collector. Collector is going to be a little bit lower speed and maybe a context where a roadway is in and out of a neighborhood. So examples of this um, just off the cusp is like Gillespie Street 
or re, or uh, Long Street. You're going to have roadways. You're going to have Hawassi Street is another example. You might have residential access directly off of that road, but it's also a cut through street that connects other neighborhoods or connects other arteries. Okay, so thinking about that, and then local street, the lowest category or lowest classification is a roadway that's primarily going to be residential or very low volume roadway. Um, the speed, it might be a rural type roadway as well. So those are local. So what I've done is I've taken a first stab at this. This is very much a draft mode as well. Is I've tried to classify all the streets within the city in one of those four categories, okay? So the red, and you have a, a smaller version of this in your packet, uh, but it's, it may be a little bit more difficult to read. The red is the, the, the major arterials, our principal arterials. The green are the uh, minor arterials. The, the pink is the collectors. And then the blue is the uh, local. Okay. So that's kind of where we are with the thoroughfare map. And what that looks like based on this first draft is we have 36 miles of arter major or principal. We have 30 miles of minor arterials, 16 miles of collector, 82 miles of local, which is the largest amount. And then we also have quite a number of private streets. Those would be what we call private. Those may be maintained by MSU. Those may be maintained by the county. Uh, they may be maintained by HOA. Uh, but those are all within the city limits of Stormwater. Those have been identified on there as well. But the long and the short, this is the number we're trying to get to right here, is what are we responsible for maintaining? What do we, what do we need to be planning for budgetarily um, to do our maintenance schedule and improvement schedule? So you're looking at about 130 miles worth of roadways that we're going to be responsible for improving, okay? that there's an expectation for us to improve. And that translates into 268 lane miles. What that means is we have some roadways that are two lane. Most of our roadways are two lane, but we have some roadways like Spring Street that's four lane. So in order to budget for it and, and estimate cost, we need to identify exactly how many lane miles. So that's what that means. Um, we, are, we are hoping to update this thoroughfare map regularly, and that's identified in the policy to do that, uh, because this thoroughfare map will help guide, I guess you'd say, the, uh, the investment in those types of classifications of roadways. The other thing I'd like to mention is um, this kind of uh, co conjoins with what uh, Neil Schaefer is, is doing is they are doing traffic counts around the entire city and the county right now. And I believe they're doing like 80 locations of traffic counts. So it's an incredible amount of data, more than we probably have ever received as far, at one time as far as traffic data. What I would like to do, and I've talked with Robert Walker a little bit about that, is take that information that they're acquiring right now and we'll be incorporating into our master regional transportation study and incorporate that into our thoroughfare plan to where these roadways will be classified based on traffic volumes, not necessarily just on my first blush at trying to do this anecdotally, if that makes sense. So it will be a data-driven kind of uh, map. Okay, any questions about that? And, and by the way, you do, like I mentioned, you do have a smaller copy version of that in there in your packet. And Alderman Carver, I'll, I'll put one of these packets in your uh, mailbox as well. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so then that leads us to the street policy that the mayor was alluding to earlier. Um, I have a copy of the street policy. This is very much in draft format for, for comment. And uh, but the long and the short is the mayor, the mayor did a good job of introducing that, of putting a higher priority on maintenance on the higher classification of roads. Those are the ones that people are gonna use the most, the visitors are typically gonna be on. Um, in order to do that, I made a first stab at what a free overlay or a maintenance schedule would look like. And so our minor arterials, those are the highest classification of roadways that we're, we are responsible for maintaining. We're gonna to try to do those every 10 years, okay? So just to give you an example, Main Street would be a minor arterial. Okay. The last time we overlaid Main Street was 13 years ago. Okay, so if you go through and look at Main Street, it's it. I would consider Main Street a pretty well constructed road. It's holding up well, but the surface is deteriorating. It's becoming just a little bit old. Okay, 
So in order to give that fresh appearance and that best foot forward, we would probably have already overlaid Main Street at this point, okay, based on the schedule. A collector street we would do every 15 years. Um, that you know, if, if a roadway is constructed well um, and the base is sufficient and it's not experiencing some kind of abnormal traffic loading, then we could expect it to last 15. Okay, and then a local street. These are subdivision streets. Typically, would be around 20 uh, cycle. Again, it all depends on how a roadway is constructed. And that will be part of our analysis going forward as well as understanding a little bit more about how each roadway is constructed, which is going to definitely uh, relate to their performance. Um, as every road is built a little bit differently at the time that it was based on different materials, different thicknesses, that type of thing. Talk, talk about going forward though, Edward, and for our, for our, as, as we're moving into, when we bought, when we adopted the UDC and adopted the new standards okay. for street construction, so right. as we go forward, they should all be built. Yeah, and that's something that we've noticed, and I appreciate this board's support on um, not only the the UDC, which we've tried to elevate the structure number of the roadways, but also coupling that with the support of providing an engineering inspector, somebody who is out on the ground uh, with the contractors who are building these subdivision streets that will, will then be turned over to the city. In the past, that has not occurred, and sometimes we we bought things that were less quality than than they were supposed to be. So I think going forward, the new will have a much better quality street, uh, but the ones that were done in the past will obviously have to evaluate those and do some analysis on them. It, it may have to supplement that with more than just a simple overlay. Yes, sir. How many other municipalities are using that process now? Do you know, is it, do you know any of them using this I, process? I, I think that uh, some of the larger municipalities do this. Uh, I mean, they have a, they have a maintenance policy. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I, as far as the overlay frequency, I don't know if that is a, a exact correlation. I could find out some more information. Um, I actually had a visit with the mayor this week about trying to visit with Tupelo about kind of what their thoroughfare plan and program would look like. So I'll, I'll be happy to, to do some research on what other sister communities are doing. I'll be honest with you, my, my suspicion is that they're not taking a more proactive approach like this. I think it's more probably of a reactive approach. Edward, um, and I just this mayor, how, how far, how much of our bond money for streets do we have left? Is, is 21 our last one, you know, of what we've, we've borrowed in this, this the last two field bond uh, issuances for for street? Where, we, where are we on that? We did, uh, we did. One million dollars a year for four years from seven, let's see, 18 through 21. So next year will be the 20 was last year, yes, sir. So going forward, I guess our plan would be to continue to issue general obligation bonds and to, to, to do this. I would hope well, yeah, let me. Uh, the goal is to not have to do that. The goal is to have, money or yes, money. is to have a have a set amount of money that we are able to and and understand that this is aspirational. It, it is, I think, it is uh, uh, doable, but it's also aspirational as to how long it takes us to get to the point where we can actually achieve this. And Henry, to answer your question, from my perspective, I you know this was one of those intuitive kinds of things that uh, Edward and I talked about, about what makes sense and what we know, how long roads have lasted. And so it was it was actually something that, that Edward was clever enough to derive. And I just knew that it was something I thought we needed to look at in terms of how we treat our streets and, and how we move forward with a plan. Ideally, it'd be nice to be at a point where we didn't have to borrow. Yes, to lay these absolutely. What do we expect when this thing's fully funded? Is MIMA, 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 whatever, uh, state, in, uh, uh, internet sales tax. About eight hundred thousand a year, I believe, from them. And it seems to be going up a little bit. Is it so okay. it, it might, um, depending on how people shop going forward, it might reach that nine hundred thousand to a million. And for those not quite familiar, this should be if, if retail sales hold up and internet sales. This will be an every year. This will be an this is an allocation to us every year. Right. Um, and so our supplement to that. And Edward hadn't reached that point yet, but he will, he will show you what, based on his calculations, would be needed to do that. 
That's a great segue into the it was, conclusion of this slide, so I appreciate that. Let me ask one more thing, and I'll bring you Dan in to say one more thing about this. As we go forward with, with plans to do major overlays on, on, I call them major city streets, but in what's that second category? What we call that? Um, Under, the, the collectors. Minor arterial. Oh, the minor arterial, yes, sir. Um, do we need to think about Placing in on underground infrastructure, water sewer lines before we go in overlay. Uh, I mean, Ms. Kimwood, I mean, out there again, I mean. I, I, I think what we're doing, we're doing a lot of communication between utilities and streets based on the direction they all want to go to address the issue you talked about so that we're responding and so that once you get a good street, then, then we've got the infrastructure addressed. Is that kind of what you're asking? Yes, sir. I think, what? I think it's. Although it's two departments and looking, but we're working real closely together and laying out where our plans are, and then, of course, clearly understanding where Edward and his group will want to go. And apparently, through our, our, our new budget and our new money put on in, in Washington Park, we're going to have money for capital improvements of what you're talking about, and then our, our internet sales tax money, along with, I guess, what we budgeted in the past. Is going to give us funding, sort of like they was talking about funding allocations each year to be able to go in and do this. So I guess it'd be kind of a coordination thing. Oh, I mean, just one point on the on the utility part. That's right. A lot of our budgets, if you look at the bigger projects and driven down, but then there's a lot of sub projects on certain specific streets that can be shifted and adjusted to make sure we compensate that over a five year period. So, so we've got we've got that's kind of our planning model, but. Clearly, we've got to communicate. Straight. And we try as best we can to sync up those schedules. Uh, yeah. We 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 have we are typically at least a year, if not two years, out talking about what projects are being considered for overlays coming up. Um, at least we have in the past when we had more of a four-year plan. They have their own uh, capital improvement utility plan as well, and so. We've had to make some adjustments uh, on the overlays. We'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Like some examples are in, in Green Oaks. Uh, we had some uh, streets that were proposed to be overlaid this year, but we had to bump them until next year because of the proposed improvements over there in the Green Oaks subdivision. So, so like downtown on Main Street, before we did an overlay, I know we're doing a set, but we've got probably water lines, unless they've been replaced since that original our water system put in. Those things are 100 years old. Downtown. And, and would it be even though we're not having faith, you know, their water line failures? I mean, is is it proof for us to consider replacing the water lines before we do the next overlay downtown? Even though you don't have water lines popping everywhere, we got hundred year old water lines. That at some point in time, we're gonna start seeing some system failure. On. Alderman Carver, I want to make sure you don't feel left out. Did you have any questions so far? No, ma'am, I'm good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what that looks like, we, we do put a frequency schedule like this. We're wind up, we're going to, our target's going to be about eight miles a year that we'll be overlaying, okay? And our allocation of streets that we overlay will be similar to this pie graph. So half of them will be local streets simply because we have the largest number of those. Minor arterials is a good chunk of those. Remember, that's about 30 miles total in the city. And then the collector would be a smaller. Again, this is a this is a, um, a first draft, if you will. So, so if, if we adopt this, you say we'll be doing eight miles. So how many miles we do present now? How many miles? Well, this board has done five miles on average for the last four years, which is which has been great. I mean, we, we have, it's been a, quite a, a large number if you look at a total term. So we'll wind up doing over 20 miles this term, uh, which is which is really a large sort of a record. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we, we've been trying to put together a, kind of a historical uh, snapshot of the overlays over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, we don't have those numbers quite solidified, but I hope that we can get those relatively soon. So like the, yeah, so five miles, I'd say here in recent past is what we've been doing. And we've been spending about a million dollars per year to do five miles, so we would need to up that um, to close to $1.8 million to get to that 8.2 miles. Okay. So that's kind of the target number that we're that we're looking at. 
So I'd encourage you, if you have time, to look through this street policy. The other thing that is in there that, uh, that I think that hopefully will be well received is we're trying to make a conscious effort to overlay or main, provide maintenance on entire street links, not partial street links. Um, and then I think if we have the budget and the, we're, our goal and approach is to do eight miles, we'll do entire local streets and major sections of the minor arterial collections as opposed to just small segments. And, and let me say something about that because part of the Part of that is the feeling from people that their street never gets done because you do half and half of it feels good and the other half doesn't. And then you come back however many number of years later and do the other half and this half doesn't look good. So it's, it is that sense that we never have a really nice street, you know? So this is, it's as much uh, about how, how we address a street and how people feel about their neighborhood, et cetera, as it is uh anything at times so rather than you know have that partial approach to it that we do we do a whole street so that's that was the rationale and the thought process behind that okay so if there's any questions about this i'll take a pause before we go on into the overlays for this past year okay i want to just briefly talk about so if you'll take a quick view of this pie chart okay this is what ideal in our policy would look like and then I'm going to compare with what 2020 and 2021 projected looks like. Um, so this is this is the allocation of the streets that we just completed. Um, actually completed them earlier this week. At least all the overlays. We're planning on doing all the striping starting next week. Uh, we spent a million dollars, did a little over five miles. One thing that we did do really well this year that I think has worked out is um, we put the onus of all the utility adjustment of the the manholes and water valves and the roadways on the contractor this year. Um, we've done it in various ways in the past, but I think that this has worked the best. And um, of course, it wasn't perfect. We are working through a few small things, but I think that's a, a good lesson learned and think something that we're going to really strive to do going forward. This is a map of showing all the roads we did. Um, and then in your packet, I have a draft of the 2021 uh, program. This is the same four year, you know, the four year list that we've been working through. We did have a couple of streets that got bumped down to 21 for various reasons, and those are indicated there at the bottom. But this is what it looks like as a snapshot. It's 5.5 miles, and we're looking at a little over $1.1 million. Again, the allocation is not quite what it would look like if we we had this policy. We have a, a little bit heavy on the, on the, uh, local and maybe not enough collector and arterial. Um, again, this is a starting point. And just to give you guys an update, uh, we are, we've actually already started working on the 2021 plans. Our goal is to try to get those out for bid in the March, April timeline. Uh, I'm sorry, bid around March, uh, April, February, March, with the construction in March, April timeline. That's kind of what we're looking at. So right out of the gate side of spring, we're hoping that we'll be able to get some uh, Attractive pricing if we're one of the first projects in 21. Um, and now I'd like to talk a little bit about the sidewalk improvement projects. In the bond funding, we had some funding set aside for sidewalk improvement, and we've actually been waiting for a little while on the bike head uh, master plan from that was funded through the NRPA as as a, a document that could really guide the prioritization of that funding. Well, that project has been somewhat delayed due to COVID, and there's some some uh, public outreach components of that project that have been got that have been delayed. So we're anticipating that project being wrapped up probably by the end of the year. But we would like to go ahead and get started on some of these projects um, if the board's okay with them, um, just because we think they make a lot of sense. Um, some of our goals when we when we talked about these projects were we want to. We want to fill in missing links, okay? Projects that there's two good networks together, but we're missing a, a, a segment in between. Some uh, local uh, proximity to schools, and then trying to connect to neighborhoods that don't currently have any uh, sidewalk um, infrastructure. So the first one is a section along Garrett Road. This is at the end of Owasi Drive, which we have the stripe bike and pedestrian lanes on that. Those go all the way down to Hospital Road and on into Jail King Park, which we'll 
give you infrastructure all the way really downtown. This would provide a sidewalk connection on the north side of, uh, of Garrett Road. We're, we're working through the design and easement process right now on this, but um, it would connect to Oklahoma. And so that would open up the entire Rolling Hills neighborhood as an opportunity to walk safely um, to, uh, to a destination or a school or the park. The other is Pecan Acres. This is the segment that's in front of Pecan Acres that connects the missing link between DeWeese on and the Bible Shopping Center. Uh, this was previously on some plans that you guys saw for the Bully Bar funding, um, but those bids came in higher than that budget. So this is just a continuation of a highly traveled uh, section of, of uh, pedestrian path right now with no real uh, improvement. Um, the other one is Louisville Street. So this is the uh, Louisville Street multi-use path that we're finishing up right now that goes all the way down to Emerson. Part of that uh, plan or the grant application was we were going to provide a safe crossing and academy and a uh, opportunity to connect to the Dollar General because there's a lot of people that are utilizing that right now and using Dollar General as their uh, destination for groceries and um, just general supplies. We've removed this from the grant because of the, the, the cost overruns and the budget, but we'd like to go ahead and uh, include that. We actually have that on the agenda for uh, Tuesday night, but the crossing there at Academy Road is already is already installed. We have the pedestrian push button for the crossing there. Uh, the other one is Yellow Jacket Drive. Um, recently, if you haven't been by Yellow Jacket Drive, we converted some on street parking on the south side of Yellow Jacket Drive from Eckford into the SHS campus. We converted it from Old Street parking to a pedestrian lane um, because there's a lot of kids that walk to and from uh, the high school before and after school. So um, we consulted with the school district about that and they were very, very supportive. This would be a continuation of that uh, pedestrian network to the east. And as you know, that there's uh, several new neighborhood developments going on at the old Josie property. This would provide that missing link uh, in connection between those two with the eventual goal of getting all the way back to Jackson Street and then you would have a, a, a vast network from there. Um, this is the Lincoln Green sidewalk connection, what we're calling it. This is going to connect what we just completed on Locksley Way up to some existing um, sidewalk uh, infrastructure that is, I think, I don't know the name of the apartment complex there, but the large uh, social apartment. block. Social block. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is right by the water tower, if you know where that is. Um, the city, probably two, three years ago, did a, a pretty good project that extended sidewalk from there up to the RV park. So, now you'll be able to have uh, infrastructure from this intersection all the way to the Starbucks shopping center area. Um, so that's a, that's kind of a missing link, and then this last one is what we're calling the South Montgomery sidewalk connection. This is the intersection of Lynn and Montgomery. Um, this property here is where the new subdivision is being constructed. This is Mason Deville. We had a, quite an extensive network on Lynn Lane um, from years past um, tap projects, but this will be providing a connection along the east side of Mason Deville that would connect to this new neighborhood. So that'll. That'll really provide a, a big connection with eventually going all the way down to Academy Road through the, you know, connecting up with the fire station. So those are some of the um, the proposals. We're not exactly sure how much these are all going to cost. I think we have around $150,000, if my numbers are right. And, and then some in the um, programs that Startle Utilities is doing, right. where they're allowing right. um, cost yeah. To be used of lawyer. So I, I, I think you probably, I felt comfortable when we had our initial conversations that we, we were going to have enough money to, to cover these stuff. Oh, Edward, on that first photo about the Dollar General, we're going to have, do we have enough room there? We're going to put culverts in the ditch? Or? We're going to have to cross the ditch with one location just to, because we want the pedestrian. We're, we're, we're lining up the sidewalk with what's already constructed in front of the Dollar General, which is on the east side of the ditch. So we'll make a crossing right here. So the is it outside of the right of way or we're we going to get- We have quite right a bit of right of way through there. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll be able to do that. What about there by the uh, water tower? We're going to do that's a 
does the terrain there around? Is it going to be like a retaining wall? Yeah, we'll have to work with utilities on that. Um, probably there's quite a bit of gray goes up that hill right there, um, and that's probably why it's never been done before. But we'll have to work with them, and then obviously keep connection or access to the the water tank. It's, it's a short area, but it's probably going to be more expensive than normal just yeah. due to the terrain. Yeah. And each one of those can be bid differently or right. separately so that if we need to pull one out because it's too expensive or we need to do something different. And, and, and just about with all of these examples, we already have pedestrian walk in there. And it's just a matter of providing the infrastructure for them to do it safely. So um, I know this is well traveled right here. So those are the sidewalk improvement. Any questions about that? Okay, I'd like to now turn it over to Kevin Stafford, who y'all know in the Columbus office with Neil Schaefer, and then he is going to introduce Robert Walker. Robert is in Jackson, but he's joined us not today on the, on the uh, virtually, and give you a little bit of an update on the regional transportation study, which we've been working on for a better part of a year now. Uh, yeah. had, had a little bit of a delay due to COVID, but... Uh, we are we're back full steam ahead and they'll give you an update on that. Well, and let me give kudos. Uh, this this is something that MDOT is uh, funding for us and doing and doing with us. So I'm, I'm very grateful that uh, uh, Melinda McGrath at, at MDOT saw this as an opportunity for us to, to partner with uh, Mississippi State and the county and, uh, and, and MDOT to, to make this happen for us because I think this is going to be a, a really um, positive thing for us to have done and, and have out there for people who want to come to the community. So, Kevin, go ahead, sir. All right. No, no, no. Thanks, Mary. Thank y'all. Uh, obviously, y'all know who I am and what I do, and so the beauty of this today is I get to hand you a handout and then watch my boss sing and dance for you and tell you what it's all about. Because, But what's interesting for this for me is I've been able to step back kind of in y'all's shoes and play devil's advocate as we've gone through this transportation study. And One, using the resources that Neil Schaefer has, we have transit and bike uh, ped, uh, folks out of our Baton Rouge office that are working on this transportation as well. Uh, we have some transportation and traffic folks out of our Jackson office that are helping on this. We have landscape architect team out of Hattiesburg. Uh, we have some more graphic designers out of Jackson. And so it's a full team I, that I get to use every day. But uh, as the mayor and Edward can probably contest in the calls and the meetings we've had so far today, I probably play devil's advocate and shoot holes in what we're doing uh, on, kind of from their perspective instead. So it's been fun for me. And, and with that, Robert Walker, who we have as our project manager on this, and he's the one that gets to pull all the strings and pull this together. And he's going to kind of talk through this simple brochure that is kind of a summary of what we're putting together. And he didn't come today, I know, uh, because I know he's going to be back in front of y'all in the future to kind of give you some updates on what really uh, is going to be the, the recommendations that come out of this and some of the implementation factors of it. But you'll see some things even in this brochure that we've already put together uh, in consultation with MSU, for instance, that they're wanting to look at uh, that we've already put some pretty pictures to. But Robert, with that, I'll kick it over to you. Okay, Kevin, thanks a lot, and uh, appreciate y'all having us here today. Uh, can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Well, I know we uh, we put together a little brochure almost to kind of describe. I hope that's in front of y'all, and y'all can kind of, that's what I'm looking at to kind of take us through this. And uh, most of the information is on the inside part of it where we kind of go through the scope uh, with the highlight, hit the highlights of kind of what we're doing in the plan. Uh, as Edward and the mayor said, we started this, really had a kickoff meeting back in January of this year. Uh, and then before we got done with all the data collection, the virus hit and kind of delayed some of the traffic counts that MDOT is doing for us. Those have actually started back up when, when uh, Mississippi State started, and we're starting to get that data in now. So overall, that delayed a little bit of the, the traffic part of it, but uh, we're still going to meet our deadline, which the whole study is supposed to be finished sometime in May of, of 2021. So, uh, but we've been keeping everybody up to speed, uh, what we've done, and I'll kind of go through the overall contents of the study and then kind of tell you what we finished and what we, what we can deliver here pretty soon. So, uh, like discussed, this is a, this is a overall plan involving Mississippi State, the city, and the county. And we have a working group that uh, involves both Edward and the mayor, uh, as well as uh, people from the county and Mississippi State. Uh, and they've been terrific to work with so far. So we, we, we want to make sure we kind of go through this scope and plan and kind of hit, uh, make sure we're doing the analysis and, 
involved in everything that we need to involve as we go through it. So first of all, it's a, it's a community-wide plan. So uh, data collection, we've been collecting a lot of data, the GIS maps of you know existing roadways, existing facilities, bike routes, uh, sidewalks, uh, photography. I won't get into all the, all the weeds of that, uh, but we've got a lot of data we've been collecting. Of course, as we pull all this together, this data goes right back to you as the owner. So y'all can keep all of the information that we are gathering within your own system when we're done in the end. So um, one of the things we're looking at for sure is the transit plans. Uh, you know, transit is very important as, as especially students that use the transit system, both on and off the, the campus. We're looking at that. Uh, and that folds into the, to the bikes, the sidewalks, uh, as a lot of students, as y'all know, live not on campus, but right off campus. So some of the issues that we've heard about in the past and we're, we're seeing a little bit in the studies that we're doing is, you know, some of the transit uh, services are not totally on time at times. And that, that leads to maybe not as much service and, and usage as should be for those systems. So we're starting to look at that. Some of this may be, you know, the congestion of getting across Highway 12. Some of it may be the uh, the buses are getting late coming in and out of some of the pickup facilities or the some of the shopping areas. So we're looking at that. It could 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 end up being that we had uh, a recommendation for added buses. One thing that we may look at is a bus priority system where you uh, kind of works like the uh, emergency vehicle preemptive systems that's on our traffic signals. Y'all may be familiar with that. Well, a bus, uh, a bus priority system would work as such that as those buses approach maybe a signal to cross Highway 12, then they get priority to move them through and keep them on time. So that's just one of the things we may be looking at. Uh, but we're just now getting into that, that part of it. The bike plan uh, is a very important piece of it. Uh, we're, we're going to look at, and come up with a future bike plan to help prioritize the uh, the future needs. Edward hit on some of the things that y'all are trying to do, and it's very proactive. Is you know you've only got certain amounts of money that you need to put in these systems. Sounds like y'all are well underway on the paving overlay system, trying to plan for the future, which is terrific. And that's what this plan is: is trying to give y'all a tool so that you can really try to make the best decisions you can on prioritizing all the different transportation needs that you've got. So on the bike plan, we're going to come up with a, a an improvement plan uh, that makes sense, uh, makes sense with uh, where the where the new facilities need to be um, in conjunction with the road improvements and the transit improvements. So we're doing that on campus. We're doing that in the city. We're doing it out in the county. So that's why we're involved in all of the the stakeholder group that we've got. Um, so in addition to that, though, what we've sort of been working on, and we should have totally complete in a couple of weeks, Mayor, I know you've had a lot of involvement with, is a actually a sort of for tourism, a bike map uh, that, that can be printed and can be kept in uh, wherever you all want to keep them and hand out for visitors that come to town. Uh, this inset has sort of an example, I think that's in Vancouver, that Edward had showed us a while back uh, that he had seen. But we're going we're gonna to come up with it. We've already got a map that we've kind of vetted two or three times to make sure it looks and includes all the information that we need it to include. But that's going to be ready to give out in a couple of weeks. So that's a, an exciting thing that we're going to be doing and delivering to you all. And then, of course, the... The electronic files are going to be given to you all to, as things are added and, and modified, you can update this and print it each year if you want to and kind of keep it up to date so that uh, a lot of people come in and out of the city and county and this can be given to them to know how to move around within the city on a bike. Uh, so that's very exciting, a good, good thing that was added to the plan. And then uh, a lot of the a lot of the studies that we're having to rely on the traffic counts um, and some of the projections we'll be doing will be some of our critical intersections and corridors. Uh, we've worked a lot with the, the 
with Edward on developing some of the things that we'll need to be looking at and also uh, the university. And these, these might have to do with intersection modifications, signal upgrades, corridors that, uh, you know, I throw out. So like South Montgomery or Stark Road or, you know, corridors like that that uh, have been discussed in the past and we need to look at. So uh, potentially new corridors. We're looking at, uh, you know, does it make sense to add a corridor here or there uh, as development is anticipated? So those are all in what we call the roadway improvements part of the plan and we've kind of been waiting on the traffic counts as they're starting to come in now to kind of really attack that part so in a couple of weeks when we get the rest of them in we'll be really diving in and getting that part of the project started and initiated uh, and as we go through those we're not going to wait uh, to finish the plan totally we will have some interaction back and forth with you all as as we're getting into those concepts. So uh, I'm, I'm sure as Kevin alluded to, we'll be coming back uh, to the city with input. So, and then in the end, we're going to be wrapping it up in, you know, a nice deliverable. We'll probably have a sort of a summary document similar to what you're seeing right here. That's kind of easier to look at than our really big final plan. You know, the plan will have all the detailed information in it, but a lot of times y'all don't want to go through the details. You just kind of want to see something that's easy to understand and, and communicate. So we'll be doing that. We will wrap it up in May of next year. Uh, but like I said, we will be a lot of interaction. We have the stakeholder group, mayor's on it. Um, I know uh, Mike Taggart is on it. We have Jeremiah Dumas, Saunders Ramsey, uh, some folks from the university that are on it. Uh, the, the county is on it as well. So they're sort of our detailed eyes and ears as we go through our process and and uh, those are the folks that we work with uh, week in week out really as we're going through this plan so on, on this map you'll see kind of uh, also you'll see sort of a, a snapshot of what our deliverables may look like this is right now the interchange of highway 12 and college view one of the things that's been talked about we're going to be looking at is you know does it make sense to maybe do away with that interchange create an at-grade intersection. Um, that's one thing that we're starting to look at. So that's just an example of, uh, of kind of how some of the deliverables will look like. It'll be a nice rendering. We're going to do cost estimates from a planning level. Uh, we're going to try to prioritize these. We've got them in sort of a short term over the next 10 years prioritization and then 10 to 25 years, maybe a longer term horizon too. So, uh, so that that's, our goal is to help y'all plan for, you know, looking ahead. So that's 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 the purpose of the project, really. So, in uh, in a nutshell, that's Mayor Edward. That's kind of where we're heading with it. Our timeline, and I'll be happy to ask answer any questions we need to. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions of anything? Yeah. All right. While I've, while I've got you and while I've got Kevin, y'all have representation pretty much around the state in cities. And to Alderman Vaughn's question, is there, are y'all aware of other communities that may be having policies of, the, of this nature that we're trying to do as it relates to our street improvement policy? Robert, I'll let you go first, because obviously I don't know what city that I can speak to. So. I know we've helped, uh, you know, City of Ridgeland, City of Madison, Jackson, uh, in the central Mississippi area, and I could, I could absolutely poll all of our managers just like Kevin as we represent and just kind of get get a feel for that I'm sure that I'm sure they do um, uh, some don't that probably are thinking that they need to at this point too so as, as money becomes less uh, available I guess in these lean times it's certainly something that is wise to do and I, uh, I think you all are really ahead of the curve on doing some of this so Okay, well, I didn't mean to make it a hard question. I was just curious. No, no, no. So, and I was going to speak obviously to Columbus. Sure. The most of y'all know that we handle Columbus, and I'm smiling over there in the corner listening to this today because this is the same thing we did 20 years ago in Columbus. And so, uh, while we have a 2001 transportation plan uh, that's a bigger picture, we also have the local streets, if you will, collectors and arterials that we manage year to year. Now, they may not spend the same amount of money annually like y'all are. They may do it every four or five years at one big bulk. So. Give example, uh, next month we're going to bid a $5 million or almost $6 million overlay project for Columbus. 
but we haven't done anything since 2016. So that's kind of the difference of, of approach. Our maps look exactly like y'all's, but we have a progress map that we give, give the councilman uh, every year when we pay. It has from 2001, every every year we pay, it has a different color, and they can look at their map in a, you know, wide scope of, of color, if you will, when they actually pay the split, and they can see what hasn't been paid or when something was paid in the past. And then the list you gave out, that list looks exactly like we put out there. And we show them, and uh, 10 years ago, we passed a complete street ordinance there that also addresses sidewalks and ADA features that we have to do when we overlay as well. So that's all part of that. Looking forward, you know, how can we do what? Now, do we categorize and put a specific gear frame to it? We don't. Uh, and they were kind of hit on it, but one of the bigger problems that everybody has is an annexation. You're accepting streets that were probably built to county standards or to other standards. And all of a sudden, now you've got to bring up the city standards. That brings a whole involvement in evaluating and paving and planning for. So uh, you got to always say you got to have a plan in order to deviate from it. And so I think it's important to have one in place, which are doing great. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I didn't realize that uh, Columbus had done that that long ago. That was very good for them. So yeah, and yeah. we've been riding for a while, for about yeah. 20 years. We've talking about the life cycle of the street. It's about not supposed to be about all over again. Okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you both. We really appreciate y'all taking the time to be here with us this morning. So thank y'all. Thanks a bunch. Yeah. I'll leave these extra. Okay, that'd be great. Right here. Super. I think we like to make it in Okay, super. All right, anything before we uh, let Edward go? Well, actually, Edward yeah, doesn't get to go. Never mind. He didn't get to go anywhere. We got the next project or the next the next point on the agenda. Anything else that you were, any questions of Edward regarding the thing? Okay, all right. So the next item on the agenda, it comes from the fact that I had a conversation with our representative, Mr. Rob Robertson, and he was kind enough to share with me that he thought this would be a good year for the city to ask for a big project. And so I didn't ask how big I went with, well, actually I did ask how big, and he said just think big, so I went with think big. Um, so the, one of the things that has come to mind for me that I have always thought that we needed to look at doing, which is a big project, would be to extend Hospital Road out to 25. And so that and that's what this is for. I mean, that's the one that comes to mind for me. I've always wanted to extend Start Road to the north and Hospital Road uh, to the west to connect with 25 for obvious reasons. It's just the same reason we extended Garrett Road from uh, Montgomery over to Old West Point Road is because we didn't have an east-west area in there. It also opened up for development, which it obviously has done. And I think on the west side of the community, that's what this would do over in uh, the that, that big, large section of, of property. So um, I wanted to present that to y'all as something to think about. We need, we will need to do something by, or have something to take to the legislature by probably the, the beginning of December, middle of December, just because in order to pre-file and to ask them and get in front of anything the legislature is going to do, we would need to come to a conclusion. And the other element to this is we need to all agree. It needs to be unanimous in order for us to be successful in getting uh, the funding that the state would provide us for a large project. Edward, why I said he couldn't go away is because he, two years ago, had his engineering class do a rough idea of what it would take to, to do that, um, that look. And so he's got sort of a preliminary um, understanding of what it would be, but in order for him to dive a little deeper to determine what that cost would be for us to ask the legislature, he would have to go a little bit further into it. So what I am asking y'all to do today is think about, is there any other project out there that would be as impactful or more impactful to the community as a whole to um, do than to extend hospital or Stark Road? Because that, I think, infrastructure projects are the ones that get the best uh, chance of success for uh, from the legislature and uh, from a from a bonding funding standpoint. So um, that is a you know if somebody's got an idea you know please uh, put it out there. If you have concerns about extending Hospital Road um, or any issues that would come from from that area, I know that uh, a number of years ago when I was in the staff position here, William Stark, uh, who has now deceased, it said he would donate the property to allow us to do that because it obviously it, it helps someone who owns property to open it up and so I think my understanding would be that his, his heirs and those who still own that property would be amenable to it for exactly the same reason 
Um, but anyway, that is, that's part of that dialogue, but I wanted y'all to be thinking about it and see if there's anything that from a, a project perspective that impacts our community um, from a future look would be a, a bigger and more, more important or more significant request. So. I got one, man, oh, you know, something one I've been talking about a while. It's not nothing to do with uh, Hospital Road, but it's traffic on 182. You know, something we need to try to find some in the future because that that's not going to do nothing again. Bigger and bigger and bigger because once, once that traffic on 182 going to Henderson School, that traffic bag all the way back so far. So, you know, we should be thinking about some kind of way to try to take that traffic away from still the traffic coming back to 182, still in another direction. You know, we went, we we, we knew that uh, during my first turn, and we went up to, up on the hill up there. Yeah. And when that when we had that bus ride, mm -hmm. we viewed that my first turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's uh, something that we, we okay. Knew. Well, I was hoping the build grant would back. take care of some of that, um, as as we are improving that and hopefully uh, yeah, right. you know, making those adjustments along in there. Um, but we also have the opportunity potentially. I mean, the only other option there would be. Well, it still is coming off of 182. Is Apple? You know, Apple goes to the back of the Henderson property over right. there, and then maybe that that section of um, Mosley, right, and take carry it straight. But I'm not quite sure how that would work traffic wise. Um, so yes, okay. But I think the bill grant may be maybe a, at least a first effort to make a difference in that in that area. So. Yes. Too, yes, that, absolutely. Uh, as part of the regional transportation study, they are looking at the 182 corridor, and they, they are also looking at all the signalization and see if there's improvements that can be made. And I've asked them to also look at any kind of uh, other improvements that they see from a transportation policy or planning standpoint that may help that situation in the school. So that is something that they're supposed to be looking at, and I'll, I'll follow up with them to make sure that that is included in their um, Final report. It's also obviously going to require some coordination with the school district because you know it might change some of the patterns within that campus. But there's no impediment to um, connecting to Apple if you did it only at like you know if you were leaving if, instead of coming back out on 182, you just go Apple and go across or go or go down. Um, there's no impediment to that. I think it's just a, a matter of. Uh, it should be a change of traffic, traffic flow. Through there, yeah. and, and I believe there may also be some topographical impediments on Apple existing drivers. Again, that's something that's not insurmountable. Yeah, it's, okay. It's that to work it would just be another outlet opportunity. So. Mayor, we've spoken about yes. this before in the past, and I'm not sure if MSU would be amenable to it or not, but. I like the hospital road extension. Shadowwood. Shadowwood yes, across, I've had that, across the ranch I've had that conversation. And, and connecting to the Hell State yeah. Boulevard. They are they are not ready to cut to bifurcate South Farm at all. That that has that has reached an absolute immediate dead end. Because that would alleviate a yes. lot of congestion. Yes. And continue to grow an area. And that was one of the ones that was that, that's the reason I pursued it is knowing this. I thought I would go ask about that, but I've had those conversations, uh, Dr. Shaw. In particular, said that he had recently had that conversation with Dr. Kim, and that's not something they're prepared to support. Did so, they get raised but not support? Because they want South Farm to remain intact without bifurcating it. They don't want it to be impacted by traffic. So, it would help a couple of their employees and a lot of employees in South Farm. No, I, I understand. I mean, I, I think any. I, I think that's not a, well. From I, my standpoint, that's not good. Well, I revisited it a couple of from a long term standpoint. It was one set. Yes. When the property well, developed out, it's not going to be not well. And, and that, 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 that to me, that goes to that partnership between the MSU and Steve Starbuck. We see and have a need. We, we see a need and know that that's that as, as South Starbuck grows, continues to grow, that's just more, you know, continue to be a congested area with one outlet, and that's South Montgomery. Well, I guess unless you can go four out the road and come in the back side. And that's what a lot of folks but, do. But that's, that's something we need to really, they need to take them. Well, and the long-term master plan, transportation plan, can address that as a, as a future option. But as it relates to the current status, the answer was, the answer was a resounding no. Not ready for that yet. So, but you know, times times can change. But at least for right now. So anyway, if you would think about that, and if you come up with a, a different project, but the point of all that is it, it needs to be unanimous. 
And I think we would get better results if it was, you know, uh, widely impactful. Um, so anyway, if, if there's anything else, I will chew on it and we'll bring it back up again uh, at the next work session, probably. Mayor, just to see. one other thing about the paving thing, this is MDOT project. We, you know, talked about this some just, just casually, but, but the 389 entrance to the city yes. continues to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is, it's, the entrance now next to this new North Star yes. uh, Park, and it's just and they have Edward. You had a recent conversation, I mean, and as did I, and they indicated they would take another look at it. That it was on next year's project, or not right. their whatever their timeline is. It was not on this year's timeline for them, but it was on the next year's timeline for them. But they would look at reallocating potentially that segment. Yeah. We talked to Commissioner. Uh, call oh, well and as yeah. well as the district representatives and, yes. and Melinda as well uh, I believe about it so yes. they're evaluating it seeing if they can move it up in the priority uh, but uh, that they they also recognize that it is a need uh, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and, and they mentioned yeah. in the similar situation we're having in town that roadway they alluded to has a uh, deficient base by Jackson on the end. That well, that's the reason why it's deteriorating. And they're looking at doing the whole thing, not just that segment that you're interested in. So, that's good. Okay. All right. So, uh, absent anything else, are we ready to go through the agenda here? All right. I've held y'all for a long time, but I thought it was a worthy, worthy discussion. So, all right. Um, under the on the page of, of minutes, Mr. Latimer, anything with those minutes that would be they're all ready to go from your perspective? They're good to go, yes, Okay, and are those good for consent? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, we'll consent those. I have an, an intention to mention Halloween because that seems to be coming up on a fairly regular basis and, and uh, just making a suggestion that folks consider the times uh, and do neighborhood type of programs. We are not going to be doing our Trump retreat this year, um, but the, the hours, we will do what we did last year, basically, which is just suggest times from five to eight, but the neighborhoods and the parental control is is what matters as it relates to that. So I'll just make a mention of that under comments. So anyone have anything they uh, want to comment on or have as it relates to the board have it noted on the agenda? Okay. Um, we will have a presentation for the Star Area Arts Council. Mr. Bateman wants to come forward and just talk about the things that they are doing around the community. Uh, we have our first public hearing on uh, the dilapidated state of 124 Yellow Jacket. If y'all noted McKinley, the fire department took care of McKinley Street. Uh, it has, yes, it looks so much, it will look so much better. We'll get it cleaned up as well. Um, and the, the lot next to it got mowed and now we're going about to look at the lot across the way. But anyway, yes. Right, uh, so this will be our first public hearing on Yellow Jacket and then uh, a consideration of, but it's got also a public hearing for a car title loan location. Is this a replacement or an additional? The use exception? Uh, is this an additional loan place opening up or no, I think it's a, just, just a change in the, is it yeah, just a change in the ownership? It be the express tax by the Venice. And yeah. the ownership change to yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, the New title. It's just an ownership change. Oh, ownership change. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Mayor, um, Doc Kim. Yes. This property on on Lowest Point Road at, at uh, Walden Way, Northgate. Oh, yeah. So, what is that something we we're going to look at or talk yeah, about? Yeah, we, we put it on the holding post on the It's it's on the agenda. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. So. All right, and the next item is our is again a public hearing, so nothing for us to take action on as it relates to that. Mr. Latimer uh, had put together that uh, non-exclusive franchise agreement at the request of, of um, the campus communications folks, so we'll be having a public hearing on that one. The next one is the contract extension for Cornerstone. Uh, I am supportive of, and I continue to be supportive of, so I'm hopeful that anyone anyone have an issue with that not going on consent? So that's when we're splitting with uh, yes. Uh, partnership. Oh no! This is, is no. This is this is our lobbying group. Lobbying. Okay. Yeah. I want to think about yeah. retail strategies. Yes, you're thinking about retail strategies, and we extended them, so they're they're yeah. not up. But this one is an annual one, and this is the one that will help us. As, yes, help us work our way through any yeah. bond requests for the for the year. So, is, um, anyone, Mr. Carver, any issues with you on putting that one on consent? Alderman Carver, are you gone? Okay. Any, any issues for consent for those of us in press? Consent. Okay. Thank you. And then we have to extend the emergency proclamation again. So consent for that. 
Oh, oh, McCarver, are you there? Okay, sorry, thought I heard. Um, the consideration of eighth resolution, this is uh, uh, Alderman McCarver's request to put that on the agenda and since he's not with us to talk about it, this is uh, uh, his uh, effort at to, uh, or interest in, and I don't mean to be speaking for him because I haven't talked to him about it, but clearly uh, Mr. Latimer developed it, but it is to rescind our seventh and which includes removing the mask requirement. Is that accurate, Mr. Mr. Latimer? Yeah, well, that's what Mr. Carver's proposing. Okay, all right. So uh, that one obviously will be something we, and just for everybody's information, I have gotten a number of uh, emails from folks who have been on both sides of the issue. I anticipate that we will probably have a reasonable crowd on Tuesday night who want to talk about that. So they'll come during citizens' comments and they'll they'll be available, uh, able to have whatever three minutes they like to say whatever they would like about it. So, uh, but this is not a public hearing here. This is just consideration of the resolution. So uh, we have consideration of appointing Jessica Hill as an election commission official. She is the only one who has applied. So if that is acceptable, consent for that one. Uh, we also have two vacancies for the Housing Authority. We have had three applications, so that will be something we'll be taking up. And I don't, um, I, I don't know who the two vacancies that we have have both shown an interest, but there is a new person who's shown an interest as well. So we will, um, we can deal with that. But just we'll look at the resumes or the the letters of interest on them. Um, so we got two. We got two. We got we got two who are currently in position, but they've been there a while, so I don't know if, you know, I don't know what y'all want to do. So it'd be a matter of if you want to reappoint folks who are already there, but we do have a third person who's showing in. Two that are already there. Bo, uh, Bo Bell Bo is Bell. one, and I don't remember who the third. Willie Gliska. I'm sorry? Willie Gliska. Oh, okay. All right, so those are the two Willie. who are in currently there, and, uh, and then we have one person, and I don't remember the name of the person who is. It'll be in, it'll be in your packet, but I don't know. Okay. Do you want? Do you want it? No. Okay. Yeah. I've got. I've got. A, I've got a head shaking over there, so it wouldn't work. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Would so, work, so it would so work. For we might sense. So. We might do it at the table. Okay. All right. Not really um, today. Then we have the implementation of the salary adjustments. This is uh, Alderman Sistrunk's taking a look at the numbers, and it appears as though we might be able to move that up from our January budget expectation to the October. And I think that would be wonderful for our employees if we have a little bit of leeway to do that. So this is bringing them where we would have been in April had it not been for COVID. This will bring them to where they would be if we uh, we adopted the January budget. This will put them in, in October. So it gives them an additional three months. So do we have support for that from a consent perspective? Senator, could you tell everyone uh, that you hadn't already spoken? I, I would like to just say that what's happened is we've suspended all this in April. We rebudgeted it for January. It's based on the uh, market survey that the Stennis Institute helped us with a year or so ago. Um, we, when we got our workers' compensation bill invoice for um, this coming year, they gave us a one-time emergency relief discount of 20%, which freed up about um, enough cash, uh, enough revenue for us to um, – Go ahead and move this implementation date forward. So uh, it's a combination of us having some of it budgeted and then finding ourselves in this um, position of an unexpected relief and expenses that we can convert over to the salary adjustment. So win win. Yeah. All right. We comfortable with consent on that? All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's do that. Still think about this read appointing. Normally, we, when we got people want to be come back on the board, we normally just reappoint them regardless of the application. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about that, but go ahead on. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, then the next item is calling for public hearing under the code to determine the properties that we talked about, which is 99 Walden Way, 108 Tanglewood Drive, and 203 McKinley Street. Um, they they are um, need to be well. It's just it's just calling for public hearing. So consent for those for those consent. items. Okay. Uh, under planning, we have a final plat that is aggregating two lots. This is on on Gillespie Street where we have a new house, and the folks who bought who built that house also bought the lot next to it. 
and have created a situation where they want to use that as their parking area and yard. And so that would be aggregating those together. So it should be it should be something that's worthy of consent if the board's comfortable doing that. What do you think, Dr. Kim? Yeah, there shouldn't be any problem because they will have to have sidewalk seats as they did that the infrastructure. Consent. Okay, let's consent that. Maybe while we're on planning, uh, yes, sir. I know, I know Sandra and I both got an email yesterday on the easement of 25 on some old. Is that going to come next meeting? October 20th. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. And I've, I've communicated with um, Ms. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, all right. Thank you. Absolutely. So she's aware. Okay, uh, we have acceptance of a low quote for a sidewalk project. Uh, consent for that one? Consent. Okay, thank you. Um, another low quote for um, Barwick Concrete Road, and that is, Edward, you want to share that just a little bit? It's all in the Walker's district, but it's a it's an issue related to a wash of a street. This is the section of the roadway that was damaged during Hurricane Olga. We got FEMA, uh, what do you call it, mitigation, not mitigation funds, but... That'll work. Lisa, Lisa, Lisa can, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Repair funds. So uh, this is a location on um, per, uh, Briarwick, which is just north of Shadowwood. If you're familiar, we have a big, uh, not not a big, but a concrete channel that discharges a large amount of water into the roadway right there, and it's washed out. So we're proposing to replace that with a segment of concrete roadway. And then do the tie-ins on either side of it. So that's this is the quote yeah. about it. It's just it's a repair process. But back to number one. Then. What, sure. what, where where is the sidewalk going to go on there? Just, where on that's the one Edward was talking about. Is that we talked about just a minute ago? That's the one. It's all general. General. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Then uh, moving on. Claim stock at no. Well, then we have the lowest and best bid for Trustmark or. Um, Lease wow. purchase of the asphalt truck. So consent on that one. And then consideration of the budget amendments. Uh, all this truck. Have you looked at those? I have not looked at the budget amendments. Just kind of skew the house. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, I skipped number three. I'm sorry. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Compliance questionnaire. Yeah, that's a that is just a pro forma kind of thing that, that Ms. Harden fills out for us. So thank you. And the budget amendment is just the normal year end. Um, true enough. Yes, it's, it's two budget amendments, right? Um, I yes, it's plural because it's ending up the year and then starting, then the, next starting the next one. So, okay. uh, fire department. These guys want to travel at no cost, and I've, I've asked him about how many of them there are going. He's not in here today, but they're all going up to check out this new truck. So, and they are going to. Uh, it is Wyoming, but it's not the state; it's the city of Wyoming. So, um, it, but it is no cost to the city, so it allows them to check out that truck. So, consent for that so, one if y'all are comfortable. It'll be covered. Yeah. It'll be covered. Sir, it's yes, covered. yes, absolutely. <laughs> long we got covered. It's covered. Um, then the sole source quote for the diesel exhaust venting system, which is part of that grant that we approved moving forward with. So that's it for that one. All righty. Uh, HR, we've got promotions, and this would be uh, fire department promotions, and we've also got police promotions on here. So uh, consent with any consent. of those. All right, consent for those. Thank you. Um, and then one hire as a fire inspector. This is Jonathan Wade. As you know, uh, Steen McMullen has now moved over to the building inspector department, and this is to make that replacement in, in that position. So, okay. And then police promotions as well. Consent for those. Consent. All right. Uh, we've got authorization for hiring a firefighter. Um, they've gone through those and we're ready to fill in some gaps. Consent for that. Authorized that. I advertised for marketing and sponsorship manager for Parks and Recreation Department. This was something we had, had planned to do, and hopefully we'll have somebody in line for January. So we keep new position? Yes, this is a new it's position. Budgeted. Yes, this, this is budgeted. It's a new position. It's in order to begin to bring those tournaments in and start start bringing in sponsors for the fields and all that sort of business. This is also, I want you all to notice, this is also designed to coordinate with the marketing person that they're going to be hiring a partnership through the CBB. So they're going to be doing that to market the entire community. So they're going to make sure that these two positions work together so that we're making sure that we are marketing our community to its fullest. Is this, is this something like we talked about in the past, possibly a business having naming rights or something? Yes, like that. it'll be part of it. All it'll be part of it. Of yeah. So uh, and it'll be somebody who has a skill set that I certainly do not have, although I can, I can tap a bank or two. but. Other than that, it would be seeking out some of those those aspects. So. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
if you remember Alderman Little, when we were putting together our plan for Cornerstone and um, things that would be funded from the 1% monies, we, we um, planned to pay debt service out of those 1% monies. And with the legislation that was adopted for um, the development of this park, we're also able to use those 1% monies for operations. And so these, uh, this position is one of those that's being considered in the amount that we had designated for operations at their cornerstone. So it won't be a general fund position, it will be a 1% a fund position. Okay. All right, consent for that one, any issues? Okay. Then we have advertising for a maintenance supervisor in the park and rec department. Um, ma'am, no, Brandon's here. Hey, we'll let Brandon go for it for the first time with us. Um, this is a replacement position. Yeah, so there was originally a supervisor in place, but they initially went to hire it. They weren't able to fill it, so they downgraded to an assistant. But over the last few years, we've been, you know, have somebody who's really qualified in the maintenance world to do the work that's needed to do to maintain the infrastructure of the park. So as you know, as you walk around, we see a lot of things that are being neglected only because we don't have the experience and we're increasing our contract and services. To pay for those things when we internally if we get a supervisor we can offset some of those contractual costs with somebody who will have a higher level of focus so that's what this position would be what, what is Trent Hume position I don't know what he was so Trent oversees parks he's overseeing the athletic fields and he's overseeing the maintenance department and so he is an active component of that so Trent isn't looking at the bigger picture type things when we're talking about capital improvements, we're talking about fire, emergency services, all those things, he's changing life balances because he's the only guy we got. So but Trent would be reporting to this person? No, this person would be reporting to Trent. Would be reporting to Trent. Okay. And it would allow Trent to take on yeah, so the bigger picture, and make sure everything's good. Okay, so you're, okay, you're not, I'm, you're I'm, not I'm not swapping out. Not, I got you. Not okay. Leave that, leave that officer. Okay. Okay. Hold on, don't put that on consent. Okay. That's to help alleviate some, some of the hands on he's having to do right now? Or? Yeah, so right now he does all the hands on stuff for the maintenance. And then on top of that, we have Joe Dan, who's supposed to be in that position, but he's been spending most of his time mowing grass. So as we transition into trying to get him to do some more of this other stuff, we have more bigger scope things that we need to do, like the park planning. Right now at McKee, we have another water leak in the back. You know, that's an infrastructure thing that Trent needs to start figuring out with the capital improvement plan. How do we fix that? And right I'm, glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you're aware of that water leak in the yeah. back of McKee. Well, we fixed that thing oh, like three times two it's weeks ago, another, but it's, it's back. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. but he also that. needs to be responsible for some of the you know, inspectional aspects of things. So he doesn't inspect the facilities. He's not inspecting parks. He's not holding those types of things to ensure that we're, we're budgeting correctly or we're using our funds in a way that's. So we're trying to change a little bit of how we're giving ownership to people, but we don't have, other than Trent, is the only guy that we do it. So if Trent does the work there, we don't have anybody who is long-term planning for types of replacement. So if we're talking parking lots, we're talking buildings, we have a roof problem, we have aging AC units, we have the Needmore Center that's falling apart, we have erosion issues. He's doing more responding. As he is a, he's a tactical yeah. response. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll respond. I thought when we first hired Trent, this is what we hired him for the head maintenance of because we never have one maintenance at, at the park and recreation. It's always up been. Right. I mean, uh, that's why I said hold it off the sure. because that's what I thought that was the reason when we hired him. That's what we hired him for. Well, and, and that's that's absolutely right. But what he's having to do is he's having to do the hands on instead of the being the the overseer, the, the supervisor, I think is what uh, Mr. Doherty is saying. So leave it off consent. Yes, it is off consent. OK. Um, and then we have uh, approval for cornerstone change order from it's a zero dollar. It's going from a five percent from a 10 percent retainage to a five percent retainage. So other than that, um, and that seems to be something that is uh, is considered Mr. Mr. Um, Dequilla seems to think that's an acceptable change. So consent for that yes, one? Sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then the lowest and best quote from Security Solutions, which is long overdue for us to replace the fire alarm system. We absolutely need to make sure that's in place. So, yes, all right, thank you. We'll consent that one. Um, all right, uh, we need to go tactical officers, marksmanship school, sniper school. 
um, at a cost of $400. The police department consent for that one. Percent. Okay. And then utilities, we've got uh, lowest and best bid for, um, good Lord, we're sad when the lowest and best bid is 792. Yes, okay. Um, consent for that one. Um, TVA, TVA Green Switch Program. Terry, do you want to give us just a, uh, just a thumbnail on the Green Switch Program? I will. Basically, in the past, uh, we partnered with TVA and what we call Green Power Switch which allows customers to actually buy blocks of green power. Uh, this is a revision to that one. This is called Green Switch. And going forward, if a customer wanted to be in that program, they'd be uh, $10, for instance, uh, or $2, and it would equate to 200 kilowatt hours of green energy. So here again, it's an opportunity for the community to participate in that. So sustainability, and the same follows with the, fall, with the bottom one too, right? And, and the bottom one is a continuing of the program, but right. it really addresses metering in our, in our battle that we're trying to keep her from some existing right. solar projects. And Mr. Latimer, you're good with, okay. Yes, All right, so consent on those? Yes, All right, that brings us to the end. We do have two items on the executive session, which is personnel and land acquisition. Those should be available in your packet. Thank you all for staying as long as you did. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll just go back to the house and start. I've taken a look at that while while y'all were rolling through the agenda, and I'm fine with um, all the um, suggestion that we put that on consent. Well, okay, then we're going to have to put it on consent with the notice because let me see, let me go back to it and see if we need to add any language to it to put it on consent. Um, let's see, two vacancies. We need to name those people. If we name those people and put them on there, we can put that on consent. How about that? Okay. All right, we will we will add, we will make that particular item, item C, named with those two existing housing authority people. So, okay. okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good one. All right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Just a second.